little bit to have you say something. And I don't know, let's just learn your name and what your department is or what your uh, major is. And we could start with you. I'm Victoria, I'm in computing science. I actually took your course a year ago. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm Ryan, I'm a psychology major in the faculty of science. Uh, I'm Daniel, I'm a fourth year um, biosciences major. My name is Dagan, I'm in second year immunology. Uh, my name is Caesar, I'm in the faculty of science and majoring in physiology. My name is Wally, I'm in the second year physiology program as well in the faculty of science. My name is Sifti, I'm a biosci major in my third year. My name is Karen, I'm a biosci major in my fourth year. So they're all undergrads and all from the sciences. So it's becoming more homogeneous. You know, sometimes you have a big spectrum. Yeah. Um, so today I, I want to get you guys to think a little differently in the sense that I know you've been taking this course for a while and you've encountered a number of different points of view about the promise and perils of artificial intelligence. You have, haven't you? Have you heard about singularity and being scared of it and why it also will bring good things, all these ways of talking? Yeah, um, but it's, um, I think, I think it's um, really hard to think from first principles about this issue, what to think about AI. Um, and it's particularly hard in today's world because there's all these sort of uh, strong views you'll, you'll get from the movies and from the newspapers and from Kim would give you a strong view. Uh, but there are all these different points of view. And so how do we, how do we get our own view and how do we think, uh, separate ourselves from some of those things? Because I think a lot of them are really misleading and they're kind of poisoning us. And so that's my main idea today to give you, well, of course, you're going to be getting my point of view, but, but more than that, I hope, I'll be getting you to think and, and uh, evaluate each point of view and uh, maybe come to a new place. So, I don't know, I call it entering the age of designs because that's what I think is happening. We're entering the age of design. That will become clear in a minute. Um, but let me ta start by telling you about myself a little bit. So I am in artificial intelligence, as Kim says. Uh, I'm a researcher here at the, at the university and also um, I had a small uh, corporate research lab, DeepMind lab, in uh, downtown. And uh, these, this is our people from, from uh, a few years ago, and uh, we have more now. But uh, this is our current list of principal investigators. The last fellow, I haven't told him he's a principal, principal investigator yet. He's just, just arrived from out of town. Um, and um, myself, I'm gonna, I think this is sort of like bragging, but it's really, I think, just, I'm just trying to tell you where I'm coming from. So I've been doing this research for a long time in AI and psychology, machine learning and neural networks, and uh, in both academia and in corporate research labs. And, uh, and so I'm kind of viewed as a pioneer and leader in this field of reinforcement in the subfield of AI. Um, in, which is all about uh, a prominent learning approach to AI in biology as well. So like you would find theories of reinforcement learning also in, in biopsych and in uh, neuroscience. And um, I kind of wrote the book in reinforcement learning. I just wrote the second edition actually. And it's just on the web now but, and, it, it, and at the publisher. Uh, it's a big step for me. So one thing we should start is with the definition of intelligence. Okay, so I think this is the, the correct, uh, widely held definition, although it's kind of messy, it's the, the most held definition, but they're not the majority of the definition, people's definitions. So intelligence is the computational part of the ability to achieve goals. Okay, so it's all about goals, and it's all about the computational part. It's not like, you know, I'm really strong so I can achieve a goal. You gotta do it computationally. That's what all you mean by intelligence. And uh, it's curious, and I can give whole talks about how it's in the ideas of the beholder and not in the thing itself. You can't look at a thing and say, that's an intelligent thing. You have to say that for certain purposes, it's more useful for me, for me to think of it in terms of its goals. 
and other purposes, it might be useful to think of it as its mechanisms and therefore not as an intelligent thing. And of course, it's going to be a matter of degree. Some things will be more goal-oriented than others, like um, uh, you know, a thermostat has a goal to keep you at the same temperature, but you can also understand that mechanically. And then like you could say water has the goal of getting to the lowest point in the room if you pour it on the floor, uh, and that's a little bit useful. And then, of course, there are more intelligent things. Um, but perhaps the one that's relevant today is the last one. That it's, intelligence is a powerful thing. There are th systems in the world that it's more useful to think about th them in terms of their goals, like people. It's more useful to think about people in terms of their goals than it seems about their mechanisms. Of course, by, uh, rarely is it useful to think about people in terms of their mechanisms, what they will do in terms of how they're made out of parts. Although, of course, in bioscience and science and in medicine, we do think about those parts, but uh, it's not too useful to explain their behavior, usually. Okay, so let me give you a little example of AI, reinforcement learning, goal seeking. Just wanted to make it a little bit concrete for you. So here is a little agent who's running around in this place, in this maze, to find the goal, start the goal. And when it finds the goal, it, it learns how to get there efficiently. Um, so it's a learning agent. It doesn't know anything about space. It learns that, you know, when it's in this cell and it goes action number two, maybe it goes there. And if you hear it does action number two, it stays where it is because there's a obstacle in the way. Okay? And so it can learn about each cell's lead to which other cells. And it learns uh, which cells are, are good, either because they get reward, you get reward when you reach the goal, or because they lead to reward. So, uh, well, the green is basically a measure, a measure, a representation of how uh, good each state is. And when it realizes that a, a state leads to the goal, it turns green. And the intensity of green is how far away it is from the goal, or how close it is to the goal. And what you're seeing here is I'm just uh, interfering with it, and I move the goal from there. It thinks those places are good, but now as it's going around them and not finding the goal, it's realizing they're bad, and they will fade away. And this place is actually quite good, but it doesn't know that, so it's shown as dim. And yeah, so we've really seen what's in the mind. The, the color is how good it thinks they are, and the arrows indicate which way it thinks really how good each direction is. And so it will go the direction that has the highest uh, highest value. And um, so when it finally reaches there, it then it will connect those things. Now, how is, it, how is it learning those things? Well, it's learning them because it's learning, it has learned a model of the world, and it can imagine being in each place. It can imagine being here and going there, and decide, oh, if I, if I did that, that would be good. So I will, I will learn to do that. It's learning which cells are, or which next to which other cells, or which actions in each cells lead to each place. So it's a simple model of an agent, right? Running around like a rat, uh, deciding what places are good, deciding which places, what, what stimulus response rule it should do in each place, and um, finding a shortest path. Yeah? You said that when it reaches the goal, it gains us some sort of reward. In mm -hmm. this situation, we're talking about an AI, right? So what kind of reward are you offering to the AI in this situation with this? So what would be the reward here? Okay, the reward is just a, a designated signal. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, just a number that, it is, that the agent um, is, the design of the agent results in it trying to maximize that signal. So if you were to draw a, a box diagram of the agent, there would be uh, input things coming in telling it the state of the world, out, output things are the action, and then there would be a special input for the reward. The reward is a scalar number, just a number. So it's zero for most time steps, and it's plus one when you arrive at the goal. Is that right? Because I've done this a couple different ways. It's, it's, it's also a common way, and maybe that's what I did in this case, that I actually give it a minus one for every time step that goes by, but it ends when you reach the goal. And so it's trying to predict uh, the total amount of minus ones that lie ahead of it. And the lying ahead of it would be you know, a number of time steps to the goal. Anyway, it's a special, 
designated signal that it's trying to maximize called the reward. And what we're seeing um, is we're blocking off some things and it's acting like a goal-seeking system. It's finding another way to reach the goal as long as it can. And uh, so we tend to, I tend to talk about this in goal, goal language, although it's just a program. And if you block it things off, it can't reach the goal. And now it can hardly go anywhere. Um, and now it can just go back and forth and no possibility of the goal. And it just decides that things are worse and worse and worse. And um, I don't know. Did you think of it in terms of goals? Did you, uh, do you now feel sorry for it that it can't get out a little bit? Do you have a little bit of empathy for it? <laughs> okay, well, if you did, then you're thinking about it in goal-seeking terms as a system that has a goal. So that's a simple system that has a goal, has actions, it can sense the world. A uh, very, very simple system. Now, of course, we can do it with uh, real vision and uh, actions. Uh, we can control robots and um, play complicated computer games. So that's what I mean by AI and having a goal. So now let's move up to where we are. Um, let's talk about where we are. So the thing about today is we live in an age of ever-increasing computation, uh, cheaper computation. Now, you've probably seen this kind of slide before of uh, exponential increases in computer power. Yes? Yes? Uh, I'm going to talk just a second because I, I made the last bit of the slide. <laughs> I added on the green, the red part, I added the GPUs to go up to 2017 or 2018. And, uh, but we are really uh, continuing on track and this is over 100 years old uh, of steady increases. If this was a straight line, we have years on the bottom and we have uh, computations per dollar, per, per thousand dollars in a log scale. And so if you look at that line, it looks like it's curving upward. What does curving upward mean here? What would a straight line mean? Long scale, so 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 15th. What would a straight line mean? Steady rate of increase. Steady rate of increase? If this was a linear scale, then a steady, it would be a steady rate of increase, it would be a straight line. But this is a logarithmic scale. So each increment up is a, f uh, a factor of 10 to the fifth, okay? So it's a log scale. A straight line would be exponential increase. Because then every, every so long, so long that passes, you go up in a multiple for each so the fact that it's slightly curving up is, is the, the stronger hypothesis that it's, it's, better, it's stronger than exponential, okay? Uh, and maybe that's a matter of interpretation. You just bend this line up to go through there. It could be pretty straight, okay? But it's, but, but it's pretty clearly at least exponential, maybe super exponential. Okay, so you know about that. And, and you know, uh, it's, it goes for a really long period of time, 100 years or more. But still, what's 100 years? 100 years is nothing in the life of the universe. And um, so the fact that this is going up so dramatically is a special thing about now. About, uh, yeah, about now, about the last 100 years when we've developed technology. And so I think you have to, you really have to acknowledge that there is something special going on now. 
in terms of the universe. And so I've re-resurrected this old picture about that I call the big picture, which is basically presenting the point of view of te technology as this fifth great age of the universe. Okay? The first great age of the universe was there was a big bang and there was just particles and dust. And that was that way for a long period of time. And then the dust collapsed and formed into uh, stars. And stars existed for a long, long time. So the age of stars, there were stars, and stars would get, they would exhaust their fuel, and they would explode, and they would form planets out of the exploded stars, and they would form new stars, like the sun. The sun is a second generation star uh, made out of exploded things that reformed into a star. Um, but that was a big, a big thing, the, the stars. But then as there came to be uh, planets, uh, then there came to be things that we want to, the, the green period, which you might want to talk about the, the evolution of life, the creation of life. Um, but I am not happy with that name uh, because right now we are entering into the, the technological era or what I call the age of design. You could call this the age of machines. You could call this the age of machines and that's the age of life because um, um, but I'm not going to do that because uh, what's happening, I don't think those, those, those terms would make much sense as we move into the future. Um, I think these machines are going to end up being looking more and more lifelike. And you guys are all doing uh, science and studying, uh, some, many of you studying medicine and uh, biopsych, bio, bio medicine. And so you know that the, the, the thing nowadays is we all think of the body and biology as machines. Um, molecular, biological machines. And so um, it, it doesn't really work to call this life and that machines. You gotta call this something though. I mean, there is a change happening now. We're changing from something. And what I think is the distinctive feature of the, of the, the, the age that's winding up maybe, or that we've been in, uh, is that these things are things that, that are replicators. They can make more copies of themselves. Um, whereas these are things that have to be designed, they have to exist in the head of some other agent first, and then they, then they come into being. So the age of replicators, the age of design, it's a pretty neutral, I think, uh, name for uh, what we're moving out of and what we're moving into the age of design things. So in the future, uh, more and more things will become, that we'll see in the world, the most prominent things will be uh, design things. Maybe they'll be uh, robots, or maybe they'll be uh, self-reproducing -reprodu animals that were designed and then, um, and then reproduced into more things, but they will be ultimately designed, uh, whereas these things are, they can replicate, they can make more copies of themselves cells without uh, understanding how they work. And that's what we are now, people, right? We, we can all make more copies of people, uh, but we don't understand how it happens. Okay, so, so the point is to think about this big, the big story of the, of the universe and this special thing that's happening now in these, this hundred years, in the next hundred years, um, it's a special event. It's like the universe waking up, or maybe like life is the universe waking up, but uh, the stage where, where we can actually understand ourselves is a big stage. Okay, okay, so that's the big picture. And now I wanna get you to, um, to my first theme. Okay, the first theme is a, is a contrarian view um, and so the first theme is that AI is uh, one of the most human-centric of all sciences. So, um, so it is contrarian. Um, we think of our, our AI, artificial intelligence, as not being a very human-like, engineered things. But, um, but just, just let's look at the facts. The facts are, well, first let's see why we're 
put off. Why we're confused, or why we're put off is because, partly it's because of the name. Artificial intelligence makes it sound like a, a foreign thing. Unlike people, it's artificial, okay? But it is intelligence, and intelligence is like people. Now, when I say that AI is one of the most human-centric of all sciences, we should look first at the goal. The goal, a common definition of the goal of the field of artificial intelligence is to make people. You know, so in that sense, you know, to make a, a system whose thought processes are as good as a person's. You've heard of the Turing test. The Turing test is to make an AI that can mimic a person. So this is, the goal really is to make something that's like people. So in order to pursue uh, artificial intelligence, we have to study people. We have to see what's, what are their key features and then re try to reproduce them. So the goal is, I mean, that's a pretty important thing. Now let's look at the fact of the field. What is the fact of the field? What does it actually do? What do people do who are doing AI? Um, well, mainly they, they make um, uh, applications and devices that are supposed to help people, like to uh, recognize the, the words that people speak, or to tell people um, um, to do the vision for them, like look at their photos on their computer and identify the people. So it, it's, it's all about helping people. And um, this is generally true about all of technology. Technology is all about helping people, uh, you know, in that sense it's, it's very centered on people. So canonical examples of technology, I would go down to things like you know, eyeglasses. Eyeglasses help us see. Uh, a pencil helps us write and makes us much more intelligent. Uh, and computers let us um, do, more, do more, and uh, we can organize things and run societies and run businesses and run our, our, our lives. Um, look at our cell phones. Our cell phones are all about um, communicating with other people. Um, AI, uh, now you might be a little bit put off by people who often talk about AI is making a, a, a computer program will pay, play better than any person. We, they, we often uh, uh, set one, set an AI to compete against people. And that may be think, maybe you think it's an antagonistic relationship. But uh, really, all those things are just done so that as a methodology, as a way of finding out and measuring the quality of our AI systems, we compare them against people. There's no real money from beating people. And like any technology, AI is, is driven by its funding. And uh, the, money, the big money was, would be for um, doing things that people find useful. Um, making people more capable, letting them run companies better, letting them run their lives better. Um, there's no, no real doubt, I think. AI is one of the most human-centric of all, of all sciences. <clears throat> that reminds me. So, So what do you think? AI. Into the study of, let's, let's stop, you have, one way to help you, us think clearly is to stop using, uh, stop using buzzwords. So like AI is a buzzword. So let's say what it really is. It's you know, the attempt to understand uh, minds well enough to make some. That's the study of minds. Um, it's really, it should be, I mean, what is, the, what is humanities? What is the field of humanities about? It's about trying to understand cultures and, and, and what are people's lives like and what their mental life is like. Yeah, I think humanities is really very much about the human mind. The human mind is our primary example of, uh, of a mind. We're really trying to understand minds. Why, why do we think of it as, as, or let's stop thinking of it as anti-human. It's exactly human.
So, um, I don't know if you're agreeing with me or, <laughs> or not. Um, yeah. Let's go to the, the, um, the, the ways that, let's examine some of the ways that people uh, try to present AI as antagonistic to, to humanity. Okay? I mean, yeah. So, one is the parable of the gorilla. So, I'm sure you guys heard about the, 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 the you probably have heard about the gorilla. The, the basic idea is that um, in, in evolutionary time, there used to be the, the smartest primate was, was not a human because humans didn't exist yet, uh, but they were gorillas or like gorilla like. And then, over, they, they, then they were eventually superseded by, by humans, and gorillas were not treated very well. And so, um, the lesson, what is the lesson? The lesson that's told uh, are, by those who argue that you need to worry about AI and it's, worry about dangers of AI, the intended lesson is that we don't want to end up like the gorilla. Okay? You've heard this, this story? Or something like it? No? Why were you told to be worried about AI? Are you worried about AI? Tell me. Tell me what you've been thinking. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> why, why you should say something? Yes. Uh, in generally, in, in media, we do see a lot of uh, AI is going to overthrow humanity just to the fact that they're more intelligent. And in the past lessons, too, we have learned that as well. Um, that's the idea of the fear of uh, to call it singularity. So, I mean, we have not heard, oh, I myself have not heard of the parable of the but I have heard of the lesson over time. The old, I mean, they always combine the idea of uh, AI superseding man and then we you know with own part. So, we always see this correlation between the two. The gorilla is often, often, often offered as an example of this having happened in the past. We don't want it to happen again. That's the, that's the lesson. Yeah? Like humans had a set of their own goals and autonomy above everything. So they did, like, they were better than gorillas. But we don't know whether AIs are going to have, like, a set of their own goals that will be separate from humans or they're going to be autonomous. Unless we know that we can uh, like if they don't have that, then they're merely resources for us to utilize and for the betterment of humanity or something. Yeah, we want, we want to think that we're better than gorillas and therefore it's okay that we took over, right? But we, at the same time we want to think that the, the AIs will not be better, even though they're going to take over. So that, that's, that's why it's kind of a funny parable. It's, you're supposed to say, oh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't let, we shouldn't let uh, the next generation come because uh, if, if we had been the gorillas, it would have been bad for the next generation to come. But for us, actually, it was good that, that the next generation came that, because we're the humans. So it's kind of a mixed. It's really, it, and I would think it doesn't quite make sense. Um, you know, the story of the gorilla should be, should also, should, could also, it's just as well as a positive story. There were gorillas and they were superseded by man and that was good. Right? And so, if you, if you think of it that way, you know, it really doesn't push. It doesn't push just because uh, things, so things are getting superseded all the time. Things evolve. So, that's my better lesson is that things change. And things evolve, and we have to separately decide what is good. Just because we're, um, we are the, the uh, most intelligent um, primate now, should we always be the most, you know, should, we, should, should evolution have stopped with the gorilla? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so let's go to the, to the rest of it. Uh, the wider things we mentioned, um, you know, this is really, you've, you've mentioned the last bullet here, that uh, the fear that we might lose control of 
of the universe, the way we're in control of the universe now in some sense, as, as the smartest one, but, but AIs may make us obsolete and less important. We might lose our jobs. We might become less important, just the way horses became less important. Uh, so um, I, I think this is the main story, and I'm just trying to present it as, as blandly as I can because I think it's, it's, it's a terrible story. And if you, if you are swayed by any of these arguments, or if you think about any of these ways, I think if you, you just take a moment of reflection, um, and, and, and you, we, should reflect them, we should reject them all. Because all of these ways of thinking are really uh, the thinking of, that you're entitled. Like, I'm a gorilla, and I'm entitled to be, to be the smartest primate forever. Even if I do nothing, I should be always in charge. I'm a person. I'm the smartest thing now. I'm in charge. I should always be in charge. It's, it's the fact that you are entitled to a job. Uh, you, uh, it would be bad if you're obsolete because you're entitled to be important forever. You know? It's entitlement. It's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's like they think they own the universe, and so they're going to determine its future. Um, so I think these all have the attitude of entitlement, the owner, and uh, the best, the strongest way I need to say it is that these are also the attitude of the racist. The racist says, well, you know, white guys have been in charge, and then these black people are coming in. Uh, we should still have our jobs, and we should be in charge, and it's, they're bad. Uh, or whatever, whatever the field is. It's the, it's the, it's the attitude exactly, the, the, the attitude of people towards AI is exactly the, prem, the, the attitude of like a white supremacist or a, or a religious fanatic who only values his own religion. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's the same, it's the same as that. There is no argument given. There's no real argument that that um, why, why sh people shouldn't lose control, why they shouldn't cede control to, to the AIs. Um, yeah, I think, so I like, what I like to say, really, uh, is that all these, you know, I'm not trying to say it in as neutral uh, of a fashion as is appropriate, I think we should reject all these as childish. Like if you have a, a child, or can you look back to when you were a child? You know, you think, uh, and you, if, you, um, if you don't get something, you may shout and scream and say, well, I didn't get a, an ice cream cone, or uh, it's bad, I dropped my ice cream cone, I should get a new one. And, or um, all these things are like saying, they're not thinking through, they're just saying, I want, I want, I want. I'm in charge now, I should have these machines work for me and not challenge me and not supersede me. It's, um, it's, 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 it's a selfish point of view. It's not a, it doesn't, it, if someone stands outside it and say, someone comes, looks at the earth and say, oh, should there be gorillas or should they be superseded by smarter primates? Uh, or sh and, and similarly, should there be humans or should they be superseded by smarter humans? That's the same argument. If you've been swayed by the worry that, that mankind might lose control, you are exactly doing a non-symmetrical argument. You're not standing outside and saying, well, from the outside, you're wanting to, give, to not give up control. It's just like, you know, the gorilla and just like the, the, uh, the single-celled animal who didn't want to give up control of the universe when I mean, it was the smartest thing. You know, why stop now? That, has, that should have no standing at all. If anyone tells you that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this over and over again because this is what you're going to be told over and over again, that we're worried we're going to lose control. And, and uh, the, the guy who wants to lose control is like saying, he's like a, a child saying, I've got this, I'm entitled to this. And the, the world is going another way. I'm, I'm, just, I'm annoyed. I'm not have a good reason. I just don't want to lose what what I have now. And that's, that, I think, is not worthy of our respect. Um, uh, 
Okay, so at the same time, I can understand it. I mean, I'm a person, and uh, I could fall into that. Uh, but I, I personally, I don't. Um, I don't think um, being a person, you know, I think it's, it's really calling on the same thing that, you know, okay, I'm a white person, so I should like white people. I'm a human, I should not care about other entities that might exist and be intelligent and be, be smart and have lives that are as complicated or more complicated than my own because they're not my genetic background. Um, so, but I'll try to go another step of, of, of empathy for this common view that we should be worried about the other uh, coming to take our, our planet. Um, and it's, it's if we think about the history of, of mankind, and we've often encountered other peoples. Um, like we go to a new continent, and there are different people uh, living at the new continent. And, um, uh, or we are on the new continent, and people come to us. And these often end up, you know, with violence or destruction of cultures. Um, so, uh, but in our histories, I think we have, we have been both. We have been both the, the conqueror of other peoples and our, I mean, our genetic history. We've been both the conqueror and the conquered. And um, so that happens. And we have to be, understand, have to be understanding of it uh, when, you're, when your tribe or your group is, is, um, is hurt. Um, so, but how do you do, how do you handle such cases? Uh, you have to, there, there are two ways. There can be conquer, things can be conquered and things can be um, co-opted or cooperated with. Do you cooperate with others or do you, do you compete with them and destroy them? And, uh, okay, so... Okay, so I need more interaction from you guys. <laughs> Is there any... What if the machines uh, were to take, take over from us? Is that bad? Or what, how do we call that bad? On what basis would we... Or are you good with it? Are you saying, well, yes, things can happen, new people can come, they may be smarter, they may run the world better than we do. You know, and in fact, we as individuals don't really run the world any, anyway. Yeah. There's humans fighting for power. Yeah. Humans have to, like, they're fighting amongst themselves. Like, forget about a third party. For it to be in that race for, like, control. Also, like, if the AI are, like, much more intelligent and more powerful than we are, it's like how humans evolve to be way more powerful than the gorillas, then the gorillas back then didn't really have any say as to what happened to them, so we probably might not have any say to what happened to us. It's right, so now, standing from the outside, what do you think? The humans evolved, the gorillas were shut out. What do you think? I think that's just, like, the natural course of nature, like, organism just evolves, so maybe, like, if nature selects for AI to take over and um, surpass humans, and that, that's probably what would happen. Yeah, I mean, it isn't an, an absolute simple thing. Like there are zoos, right? You know, there are, you know, gorillas who are in a reasonable good situation, people studying them to see what keeps them ha happy, enabling them to, you know, reproduce and so, and so on, but it's not large in quantity, right? You might be one of the favorite ones <laughs> that ends up in a zoo, it might be, be okay, but, you know, do, do it, does it scale, right? That, that, that's a, that's a question. So, 
What if it doesn't scale? Is that um, a reason to, you know, resist this, or is this just the natural way of, way of the world? Yeah, that's the big question. But let's stick with the gorillas for a moment. You say maybe that's that's just the way it it was, and maybe the way. I, I was waiting for you to say though, it's too bad. It's too bad the gorillas are 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 stuck in there. They're not very well off, um, or that there wasn't some way for the gorillas and the people to to work together. Um, isn't that what we are lamenting? Like you know how they were Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. And yeah. If we like if they wouldn't have died out, we would have coexisted. Why can't we just like cohabitate or something? Yeah, actually, Neanderthals are still with us. They're yeah, they're like four percent of the DNA or something like that, yeah. at least in Europe. But um, why couldn't we have coexisted? Or maybe we could have. I think, I think it's a very pertinent question. As we think, you know, maybe AIs will take over. Maybe we can coexist with them. Um, I think the jump from the level of intelligence of a gorilla to our level of intelligence is too big for there to be a coexistence. Um, the gorillas would offer us nothing in return for what we would offer them in a society where we coexisted. Why can't we coexist with the gorillas? Uh. Actually, it's kind of weird because uh, I'm pretty sure philosopher Max Weber once said that the reason societies exist is due to struggles between like, you know, people. There's status that's higher than the other. And this inequality between us is exactly what makes society. So it's kind of interesting that you said that we can't coexist despite the fact that we're not equals. So I guess we could also look at AI, despite the fact that they're better than us, we can't live along the same plane. Is the fact. I mean, we can't even accept our, like immigrants coming into our own country, for some people, right? And this comes to the idea of, if we can't even accept each other, how can we accept somebody who's in that even greater realm? So I think it's less along the lines of uh, like the biological standard, whether they're better than us in that sense, because whether we accept them as like morality or, or, or ourselves in that sense. It's basically more individualistic in, in that regard, if you know what I mean. So what we're saying is there's a history of different intelligence, different just, even just different ways of being, um, often not working so well together. I mean, there, they, we do work we do find a way that animals um, are part of our, our lives um, and plants. You know, we, we grow them for food and we have them on, on we, in some cases we have them on, on reserves. Um, so so this, is, this is what I want to happen today. I want you to stand sort of on the outside and look at, at what's happening and saying, well, you know, uh, it would have been better if it happened this other way. Or, or maybe it was certain things had to happen. Um, and uh, so I want you to stand outside um, and say, well, uh, people and machines, maybe they can work together and form part of a, a one complex society. And if so, that would be great. If it can't happen, if for some reason that's impossible, and people are in the way, then maybe we should, maybe people should lose, right? If they are in the way of, of what? I don't want to say progress, because I don't miss, but the, the evolution of the universe towards greater complexity or something. Yeah, I'm not clear what that would be, uh, but you could easily see, at least as, as standing outside, what would you like to see? What's the vision? For a world, and how are they? How are these? What's what's? Yeah. So uh, if, if you think about uh, ethics, yeah, I think that's changed dramatically in the last year. Like you could have claimed in 2016, I guess, that there's something inherently good about the morality and ethical standard of. Uh, human beings that maybe machines cannot approach 
right? And and this could be a justification for keeping us around e even when we're not the brightest <laughs> creation on the planet. But I would say in the last year, you know, <laughs> numerous events have, have happened to make you think that it's sort of the other way, that we're even our leaders are more incredibly stupid than we ever imagined. And and particularly male leaders seem to be falling right and left, you know. So it yeah. So I think this whole argument and you know discussion has kind of uh, moved in favor of the the uh, machines, the AIs, in the, in the past year. I mean, you, you can imagine a machine that could make decisions better than at least a lot of male leaders, and maybe a lot of human leaders generally. And it could be a machine that we programmed originally, and then it just got better and better. And if you count the number of problems in the world that it seems like humans cannot fix, the numbers seem to be getting greater, right? So, um, don't you think that a being smarter than human beings could probably solve some, some of those things? And many of these problems are quite serious for us, and yet they, they don't seem to be fixable by humans. Humans. They're probably fixable, but not by human intellect as it currently exists. So I think we, we live in a very interesting time, not just in terms of Moore's Law and you know, the, the, the curve, but also in this whole question of, is there any argument that human beings should be in charge because of something, you know? <laughs> There, there, there used to be that argument, maybe, but it seems to me that it's getting weaker. I think from an outside standpoint, um, if you look at evolution as a whole, in terms of a food chain, um, you always have an apex. And the problem I see with this analogy is that um, with your issue with human resistance to AI superseding us, is that that apex nowhere in the natural world would ever willingly give up its spot. Um, so I think, just as you're saying from an outside perspective, uh, resistance to this would be natural. Um, no one, no organism wants to give up its place in the food chain for a lower space. Um, so I don't see um, this resistance to AI um, as a childish view. Um, I think if AI does overcome us, that's the way it should go, but I don't think um, the desire to stop that from happening, and, uh, sorry, and the continuation of your own species is something that should be seen as childish. But the kind of simplicity of giving up leadership I think has also changed in the recent past. You know, in, in the heyday of the Soviet Union, you could never imagine the leader of the Soviet Union just voluntarily giving up territory and power. But that's exactly what happened, right? And 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 so um, you could imagine something similar here. So there doesn't need to be. Uh, I mean, there would be resistance, but maybe it's not violent. Maybe it's a kind of, you know, negotiated future, right? That, that's, that's one outcome. So it's not, never childish to want to achieve your goals. Um, but it, it may be childish to expect other people to take them, them seriously, you know? Like a child says, I want this, and as if that's enough of a reason for it happening. Um, uh, so like our, our imaginary racist uh, wants his people of his genetic background to, to have an advantage forever. So I know he, he wants that to happen, and so it's not childish for him to, to want what he wants. I mean, 
just as there are people that want, I don't know, sociopaths that, that like to kill people. It's not childish for them to want what they want. Okay, but it's childish um, for the racist or the sociopath to argue that, that you should want this too, that others sh should want this. Um, yeah, I don't think we should, I think, yeah, we should ignore it in the same way, not give it heed. Um, so, you know, if you say, oh, if you say the species shouldn't want itself, shouldn't, should, should resist um, losing its, losing its superiority. superiority, but it doesn't even require it to be superiority. Like you might have a niche and you're not an apex, if, if that, whether or not that makes sense. But you're a niche, you don't want to give that niche. Um, um, but, you know, the species actually doesn't make decisions, like we're talking about individuals. And as an individual, you don't have to, uh, you may or may not uh, have, a, have a species goal, a goal for your species. Um, you know, there are, yeah, you don't, you don't, it's you, what your goals are can, can vary from person to person. And, um, and so what I see is that people who's, maybe without thinking about it very much, assume that their own goals, interpret their own goals as being promoting the species and, um, and argue that everyone should, be, should care about the species. But to me, that, that, that really is racism. I mean, racism means you want the, where your, your genes come from to get respect just for your genes. Um, Speciesism, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Um, this is maybe a person here, an, an artificial person, perfectly good, but he doesn't come from my gene stock. So just for that reason, I'm gonna punish him, put him in a lower class. That, how can we just, that's, I can't distinguish that from racism. And uh, I don't see how a person standing outside of us, looking at that, would say, oh yeah, that person is punishing that person because he's, he's a machine, and that's right. Standing outside, who's, who's neither a machine nor, a, nor your species, would, would say, no, you should, they should be equal. They should live on their merits. If, he's, if he can do just as well as, as, the, as the, the person, then, then why is he given the second class in the society? So why would it be unrealistic to believe that we won't become the gorilla? Okay, so we don't become gorillas. Um, we are what we are. We get, su we get superseded in power by others. I mean, not become a gorilla, but put in a cage. Do you think if the gorillas had a say, they would still be in the cages? So we might not want to be in a cage. Um, But I think the, the, the real tragedy there is that someone was put in a cage. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And, and, and the argument that, we're, that I'm trying to argue against is put the robot in a cage. And you're, you're sort of saying, well, if I don't put him in a cage, he's going to put me in a cage. Is that not a logical argument, though? Uh, yeah, it, it's not symmetrical. Um, you're saying what, the outcome of, of me meeting the robot is one of us has to end up in a cage, right? And, and that's, that's the jump that, we don't, that I don't want to make. But if you assume that if he's going to have control, he's going to put you in the cage, uh, then you've already ruled out the possibility of cooperation. The, the cage, so-called, could be better than anything you could possibly imagine. Right? Like the you know, machine may understand human happiness and, and needs better than, than any uh, human actually does. Keep you happier, know what your you know, aspirations are, be able to you know, fulfill that within the structure of its more complex culture, which includes parts that you can't understand. I mean, that, that's possible. So there can be a, 
you know, utopia with us all living in a zoo created by, by a more powerful, more sentient being. I mean, that's not the only outcome, but that, that's, that's a possible outcome. And also in terms of having a, you know, a um, ideal life, you, you can think of how, where do your ideas of what kind of life you're aiming for come from? Uh, you have only human authors, right? You don't have anybody else to give you any ideas about what you could be, what you could do, what you could dream, right? So really, it, 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 having somebody else be in charge could conceivably open up you know, possibilities for us in, a, in an amazing way. I can't resist saying what I think in response to that, which is that um, that's not so different than what we have now, right? You have a certain set of allowed options. Go to school, get a job. Your government, you know, the government's going to take, if you earn a good amount of money, the, the government will eventually be taking half of your income. Okay, so it's not like, you know, it's all set up for you and you just have to live within it. So we, we live in a kind of cage now. And some people, you know, resent it more than others. <laughs> Scott talking about a different kind of cage, or you say, well, don't call it a cage. Okay, well, I, I think the likelihood that we'll end up in a physical cage is not very high. It, it may be a similar, if you feel barriers, like when you wake up in the morning, you think of what you want to have and what you want to do, and if you immediately put boundaries on that because of things that are not possible, that's the same, really, as living in a kind of metaphorical cage. So you're already there. Okay, so this is not that different from where I want to go. I want to go to uh, ask this question of what, what, how th should things be? What would be a good way for things to be? So, uh, but I'm going to rule out you're saying humans should be in charge because that's not a symmetrical point of view. That's not someone, you can't go from the outside and say, yes, I think that would be a universe should be always genetic humans should be in charge. You know, I say, what? That's silly. We might evolve into something new. Uh, um, so, so, so this idea of humanity, if you, if you keep it as genetic humans the way they are now, which you don't need to, you can still keep the word and, and interpret it more broadly, but, 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 but if you keep it in that narrow term, then it is a narrower goal. It's like, you know, you're getting a good meal or even you're living a long life is a, is a narrow goal. It's, it's, it's important to you, um, and, uh, but it's a narrow goal. It's not. It's not a broad goal for the uh, that you can. You're not you're gonna. You're not gonna be like a child and say, "I want to live forever." So everyone should worry about that. You know, it's what you want. It's not what other people want. Um, and so, uh, it's this statement. We we have to let go of the idea that our narrower goals have broad and long applicability. Our narrower goals are our goals. They're extremely important. I fully expect us all to work for our goals. But, but, but we, it's childish to say, this is my goal, therefore it must be everyone's goal. Or it ought to be everyone's goal. Okay? So broad and long applicability is not going to be like genetic humans. It's going to be something else. Uh, what would it be? What would, if we're going to be more open-minded about the future, and laissez-faire here just means in terms of letting go, uh, we're going to have to let the world go, the universe go, to be the way it's, it's, it sort of wants to be, because we don't control it, our influence is imperfect, weak, and one of many on the universe. Like our, we may have a lot of control of our lives. I'm, every gorilla, actually, it turned out he had lots of control over his lives, um, but it's just over evolutionary time. The position of gorillas as a class changed. Anyway, our influence is is imperfect and weak on these. Uh, on the goals that have broad and long applicability. Um, and, uh, and really, it's, it's sort of how could it be otherwise? How could it be otherwise that one person would be deciding about the whole universe? I mean, it's, it's, 
it's it's arrogant and uh, and and uh, sort of I don't know. I think we would all, even if we were, we don't have to be human human focused to say it would be bad if if one should 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 rule for for everyone for the whole universe. So so how should it be? How how what should our vision of the future be like? And I'm just going to tell you what my vision of the future looks like, of a good future, a beneficial future. People often talk about beneficial AI, but they never tell us what beneficial means. Um, they leave that to be. So my vision is, is multiplicity. You have multiple designs. We're entering the age of design, and I want a multiplicity of designs. So they should have different cultures, different societies, different value systems. Different organizations, some individuals could be uh, highly centralized, some could be di distributed, and all these different ways of being. Uh, some might be um, very open to interacting with others, some might be very closed. Um, but they, they would compete, and it's, 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 that's why you want to have multiple of them, so that they can, they can compete and see which ones work best, and so their choices, you can join the one that you prefer for your own goals. And I would expect that one of the key issues is how much do they cooperate with each other and how much they cooperate within the society. And um, that will determine, uh, have large effects on the success of their systems. Uh, but I don't think, so what we're trying to avoid, and sort of my argument today has been, you, you just don't have entitlement across designs. You, you don't live in this society and say, in my society, uh, it's a matriarchal society, and we just put men up for, or women up for certain roles, and another might do the opposite. And you don't say, you should do what we're doing. You say, well, we're doing what we're doing, and we're seeing how well it works, and you're seeing how well another thing works, and we'll see how we'll compete at a larger level, and maybe cooperate at a larger level. So, um, so we should care if our design wins. And you know, we want our design to work well, whatever we're working with. But you can't be surprised or insistent or entitled about, about it working. If it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If people uh, are, if once, once AIs exist and some people, um, and it's in traditional humans, they don't, they don't have a contribution to make anymore, then uh, that's just the way it is. So what could you say is good? If you imagine uh, this, this world where we're sort of being relativistic, any different goals could work, and things are evolving, and different, different things, and it's sort of like um, the best things that work will be working well, it's, it's sort of... Um, so what is good? What would be good? And when I look around at the news and the world, um, what I think is, is bad is things like uh, a war where, because in wars, Everyone loses, or or if you if you if you um, you might think uh, not failing to deal with climate change would be uh, uh, very bad for everybody, and so it's just a bad thing. Um, and and going to war is maybe just a bad thing. So I wanted to say foresight. Foresight is a good. So, and that's what we're seeing with with. AI, with, art, with intelligence in the universe, it's perhaps one of the few things that would be good. If, if the, you know, I'm not going to say that this group of people is better than that group of people, but if this group of people has, can see farther ahead, that's a better group of people than others. They're going, to, um, they're going to make decisions which make them more effective and successful. Um, and uh, so I, I, th you know, I think we all struggle to find um, a notion of progress or direction in the universe. Um, but I, I think it might be good that there's greater foresight, and, which is much of what we need by greater intelligence. Um, and that would be a good thing. Okay, so I'm going to be done now. <laughs> um, now we can just talk. Is there generally accepted a bad future? Yes, I think so. It would be like 
humans being enslaved by AI? No, no, I was thinking like um, reduced back to particles and dust again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I gave a lecture at 10 o'clock at night on Future Day about four years ago um, about, you know, apocalypse and, and uh, utopia. And, you know, there, there are many uh, uh, apocalyptic visions and videos you can find you know, what, what the earth would be without uh, human beings, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but it's not just one thing. It, it, it's, you know, the variations in a bad outcome are, are, are there are just as many possibilities on that side as there are on the favorable outcome. But one reason to take this course is that somewhere inside yourself you have a little bit of a belief that maybe you can help shape things toward, towards a positive outcome. So, you know, what, what I said about Dr. Sutton's lecture last term was the students had gained a great deal from you know, the experience of the lecture, but they were responsible on the test for what I said about, you know, the importance of Dr. Sutton's views rather than what he actually said. But today I think it's better than that because the last portion of this uh, teaching session directly deals with the same sorts of things that I've been talking about all along. You know, not, not enslaving sentient with AI, the AI safe, safety meeting in early January 2015, and um, Dr. Sutton was the only person there from the U of A and the only person strenuously arguing for the, being empathetic towards robots. Everybody else <laughs> was planning to, you know, enslave sentient AI. Yeah, you know, a lot of famous people, they weren't all AI researchers. Some of them were just famous people with an interest in this. So I think this year is better in the sense that you, you have more content, more nuance now. You used to just have that one Rich Sutton slide I told you, you are responsible for this, right? Now you have more. I mean, this, this takes that slide about, you know, give up entitlement, accept that, that humans are no longer in charge, treat the sentient AI, as an equal, treat it uh, included in your circle of uh, empathy. So this this expands on that, it gives you more content, more you know different vantage points, different talking points. Um, but it it's not just important for this course; it's important <laughs> for your life, right? It's it's important. Period. You know, it's important even if you don't care much about how you perform in this course because, you know, it, it, it will impact the future in a major way. And from hearing this lecture today and from taking this course, you're, you're a little bit more able to kind of conceptualize this, to be, make preliminary decisions, to have... You know, they, it's, it, it's, it's kind of exciting to think that your friends who are not thinking about this are going to be completely blindsided by whatever ha happens and, and, and you're a little bit more, more informed. Well, thank you all. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's good. Turn out well, but we still have seven minutes, you know. <laughs> it's it's uh, funny, uh, the course, course description describes how we would accommodate the shy student. 
And none, none of these guys are really excessively shy, they're all like a little bit shy. Go, go ahead. Um, so if artificial intelligence, like are you saying that one day it's going to be to like rule us or like well, what, what isn't ruling a, a human concept yeah I mean I, I could think it, it may not want to rule it, it may just want to work in cooperation with us but humoring us when it realizes we don't have a clue about certain things right you know so it, 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 it could be extremely friendly to us but still not allow us to decide everything because it would know that, that we cannot figure out a lot of things that it can. So, so we have a big advantage as people over the gorillas in that you know, we can talk, and we can negotiate. So we already negotiate with large organizations that are more powerful than us and, you know, to get a role in them. And uh, so I think, I think it's much, be much more possible for people to negotiate with AIs They'll look something like, you know, often they say ants. We don't worry about ants. We just step on them, okay? But in fact, if we could, if we could work with ants, they could do really useful things for us. If we could tell them, well, you know, I need to dig out into this bottom of this thing and, and, and get something or, or move earth slowly over time like termites can. Uh, you know, there's really every reason why um, if, we, if we could communicate and cooperate with them, animals would be really helpful. You know how you're saying that like our goals are already set up for us? So wouldn't that like benefit people in third world countries that can reach goals if artificial intelligence was introduced for that? I don't know. Because I know that people don't have access to education also, and all that stuff. Like, I agree with her. When art like AI when it begins? Would it more be for like the goals of the first world nations, or yeah. they'll be working towards that? What about countries like that are not in the league for developing them right now? No, no, but there's a strong humanitarian wish amongst many humans in the first world. They they want to sort of be heroes in the third world. You know, make make the third life in the world third world better. They, Talk, talk about leapfrogging, take a culture where they've never had landline phones. They don't even know what one is, they've never seen one. Give them cell phones and, you know, so, suddenly it doesn't matter. They, <laughs> landline phones wouldn't have been any use to them. But the, now the cell phone really working. So there, there will be leapfrogging like that. We And, and I think the AIs will allow that to happen a lot more quickly. There's already a lot of AI in your phone. Um, like, uh, you know, you've been hearing the previous AI lectures. That it really is maybe one of the most likely areas where this idea of AI coming alive, <laughs> it, it's more likely to happen in your phone than it is in some isolated computer somewhere in the world. Um, yeah, so I, it's AI will not solve everything, though. There no. are still problems, no. and the people problems most of all. I think I'm like personally just curious. You um, like in in, in lecture, you you call that robot a person and a he, and I'm like curious if you think it has intrinsic value, or if you would put a human on the same value as a robot, would you think of them as just both equal and meritocracy? Or if they were, yeah, meritocracy, if they, they were both, their value would come from their merit, their, their abilities, not from their one being a robot and one being... Uh, so does that mean that like humans that don't do anything have no value? It means their value is, would be the same as a machine that didn't do anything, yeah. Yeah. So if a machine is, um, if AI is like, like reinforcement learning, uh, seeking rewards, high rewards, then in a sense, whatever does not give them rewards is no longer valuable to them. I think that's true of all of us. Yeah, yeah and I mean, we do reward neutral things. A lot of the unexciting parts of your day, you're slightly you know, influence to do one thing or 
or another. There's no strong, you know, reward. You're, it may be a very, very tiny, minuscule one that, that determines which thing you, you know, decide. But, but like, I think what you're thinking is that um, there is some sort of unalterable fundamental difference right, between us and the machines, no matter how complex they, they, they get, there's a fundamental difference. And that, that's a kind of racist view, right? It's just like there's a fundamental difference between white people and black people, right? You know, and, and so that, that, that really did, that's, that's not a rational argument at the end. So, yeah, I don't know. So if you take a person who is not productive, like maybe your, your relative is uh, not able to work, you could say that they have no value. I wouldn't say that. You, you would still value them. Um, you know, you, you just, people do. Um, so so we had the whole, maybe one of the main points what I was trying to say was to separate between the values that you have and the values that you should have, or the values that one has and the values that one should have. The arguments are, are, that are, that are, that are um, childish, not saying, you know, I want this, that's not childish, I'm saying what you want. You want things and you are a goal-seeking system, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be defined by your ability to get to the things you want. Um, but it's, if you're arguing that I want this, therefore everyone should want this. That's, that's what I am trying to disparage. So one's own goals from the goals that you think everyone should have. Um, your own goals may not apply uh, universally. Um, we, should, we have to let go of that. Does AI not have the same goal to maximize rewards though? Well, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then normally we'd say if we get reward for different things, we have different goals. Is in, yeah, they all have. If they all have a goal. They want whatever their goal is. Like, isn't that true the other way around too? That once AIs do surpass human intelligence, what if their goals are not the same goals as, like, what humans have as a species? Yes. And when they don't align, that's conflict. Yes. And we don't know what that conflict's going to end in. But life is never as simple as as that, right? I mean, it's. Like, uh, you don't know things are going to work out well, but you can work towards it. Yeah, yeah. So but you said, what if things don't work out? Well, if things don't work out well, they don't work out well. But we can we can influence them, and we're and it's. For the best and no, we're not powerless. I mean, we may be powerless eventually compared to sentient AI, but at the moment we 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 have all power, right? So. So, I mean, like, what are no, we don't have all the power. Yeah, yeah. Right, we can't really determine the future. No. We could just, yeah. Yeah. But we can influence it. Yeah. So, I think, think of it this way, that possibly things could occur now where humans figure out a way to kind of have leverage over the way AIs develop. Uh, it, and, and it turns out very, very well, you know, just, just like in other settings. Like many authors, famous authors, talk about the effect of what they've written, that they don't really know where that came from. It doesn't seem like, you know, like people ask them, what did this sentence mean? And they feel that in their creativity, there's sort of some other element, right? So that could be the same for us. It's, it, it's not that we're limited in what our creation could do by, well, let's say we, we have an IQ of 136, right? So does that mean that, that the AI we create is, is maxed out there? No. But we, it, it can have many of the same goals and characteristics and sort of starting points. First uh, principles, you know, the, the kind of the way of, of, of thinking about things. 
that, that we thought would be a good general approach, and, and then, then it kind of evolves from there. It could turn out badly, but it could turn out better than humans could ever do it on their own. You know, I mean, you could you can imagine that with, with a human influence starting point that you let this super sentient entity take off and they create something that's amazingly good. We're just used to being on the top and when we, like just the possibility of something being better than us, it's just we're more like skeptical to that, I think. Yeah, but to think about any like male dominated conversation that you've been in, like you also know what it's like not, not to be in the top, right? It, it still functions. Sometimes that's okay, right? I mean, there, there are times when there are other people who are in a friendly relationship with, with you that just happen to be better at working out whatever you're, and you know, so, so that's how this could, could, could be. It, it's, it's like a friend that just is a very resourceful friend. Yeah. So, so I, I like to make a last comment, which is that, yeah, we can influence the future. Um, uh, and absolutely, we, we want to do that. But we don't want to, like, influence the future to, uh, to, like, maintain our advantage. Like, you'd say, oh, the racist, he's going to, like, keep the black people down. Okay, we don't want that. We want influence the future, like let the black people rise up, let, let's welcome them into our culture and accept them, and, uh, and, and, and encourage a, a symmetrical way of thinking where everyone plays, plays a valuable role. So we can help set up that valuable thing, um, or we could try to maintain our momentary advantage. And, uh, yeah, I hope we will do the latter. Sort of like, former. you know, assault, right? When men you know, assault women, it, it may be that there is a, a moment where it seems like that was, you know, strategically a good thing to do. But in the long run, it's a very bad move, right? So that, that, that's kind of a sense. So putting a, a you know, machines smarter than, than you are in, in, in a box is kind of an, an assault. So it's, it's sort of like that. It, 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 you know, protects you for a while, but because if the thing in the box is much more clever than you are, it will, will protect you for long. And if it ever does get out, you'll be pissed off. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Thank you all.